Bacteria do this. Viruses do this. Worms, mammals, even bees. Everyone does it. Every living being on Earth reproduces whether by asexual, boring, or sexual fun. Method, robots don't do that. Machines made of steel are not very interested in reproduction, but maybe they can learn. Scientists from the field of evolutionary robotics are trying to make machines adapt to the world and, eventually, reproduce themselves like biological organisms. For example, one day, two robots that are particularly well adapted to a certain environment will be able to combine their genes, OK, code to create a small robot child using a 3D printer that will have the strength of its two ancestors. If this approach works, it could lead to robots that construct themselves, creating perfectly adapted morphologies and behaviors that human engineers have never dreamed of. It seems strange and a little disturbing, but evolutionary roboticists are already engaged in such fantastic projects. Engineers from Australia, for example, developed robotic legs last year first randomly generating 20 shapes. During the virtual simulation, they checked how well each of them would walk on different surfaces. That is, they checked the fitness in terms of survival of the fittest. Then they took the best performers and paired them to produce similar legs. That is, children. Researchers have done this over and over again, generation after generation, and created legs that were surprisingly adapted for walking on solid ground, on gravel, or on water. The projects are crazy. They look like people made of wood dancing Fortnite dances, good for solid ground, and strangely deformed elephant legs, good for water. What is the main idea? Traditionally, when engineers start designing a robot, they tend to use old ideas. Why do rovers have six wheels? Because six wheeled vehicles have worked well on Mars before. However, perhaps the designers missed something. The beauty of evolution is that it constantly comes across crazy ideas. No one, for example, has developed a fungus to penetrate the bodies of ants and control them in a rainy forest. This unusual strategy appeared thanks to the generation of random mutations and natural selection. As in nature, it is mutations that will determine the evolution of robot species. Variability is important. When two organisms make a child, their genes combine but mutations also penetrate them, which can lead to the appearance of unique features in the child, like a slightly altered pattern on the wing. This kind of mutation makes the offspring more or less adapted to a particular environment. If this is an unfavorable mutation, the animal does not reproduce as efficiently or does not reproduce at all, and these mutant genes are not passed on to the next generation. Look at what computer scientist Gush Ivan from the Free University of Amsterdam is doing. He takes two relatively simple robots consisting of connected modules and combines them by combining their genomes that carry information about, say, coloration. It also adds noise to this combination of data, which simulates a biological mutation by slightly altering the offspring so that it is not just a mixture of parents. One parent is completely green, the other is completely green, the other is completely blue, says Ibit. The child will have some modules blue, some green, but the head is white. This is a mutational effect. And with this change, a new kind of creativity appears in robotic design. It gives you variety and the opportunity to explore areas of design space that you don't normally go out into, says researcher David Howard, who developed the Evolving Leg System and recently published a paper on evolutionary robotics in Nature Machine Intelligence. One of the things that makes natural evolution powerful is the idea that it can actually adapt a creature to its environment. The idea is for robots to adapt to niches in a certain environment in a similar way. Let's say you need a robot that can explore the jungle on its own. This means that it needs algorithms that control how it moves through vegetation, as well as a morphology that is suitable for dense forest. So, no rotors. First, you have to model this environment for navigation. Select and select those of the robots that cope with the task best, and then design slightly modified physical machines based on this. We ended up with a lot of small robots that are simple and cheap to make, says Howard. We will send them, and some will be better than others. If the robot does not return, it means it is not suitable. Natural selection and action. Those who can handle it will start a new generation which will be automatically released on a 3D printer. 
Thus, robotic species are evolving. Howard believes that such systems will be common in 20 years. There are more and more different kinds of robots. And these are not only industrial systems, but also household robotic devices. Of course, we are still far from the world of robots described by the brilliant thinker Isaac Asimov, but there are still progress, and there are many of them. Various companies create household robots that can help answer any question, bring a thing, or just entertain. Such robots, however, cost a lot. Thousands of dollars. Recently, there have been less expensive options that are designed not only for adults. So the Russian group of companies iFree is now actively engaged in the development of robotic assistance for children. One of them is the Robot Amelia, a localized and modified pudding system from Rubo. Amelia is intended for children aged 4 to 12 years. The system is able to understand natural speech. Few robots are capable of this yet and answer the child's question. If you imagine how many children ask questions then now, imagine that some of them can be answered by a robot taking the hit on itself. In addition, such a robot can sing or tell fairy tales. Singing songs and telling fairy tales is better for a robot than answering questions. The robot communicates like a Google translator, sometimes confusing accents and making you tense up during the response. He tells the weather perfectly. But the answer to general education questions is similar to an excerpt from Wikipedia. There's too much information that is difficult for an adult to perceive, let alone a child. Plus, during a conversation with the robot, he himself offers to ask him a question about, for example, who invented the phone and tells a story. The developers still have to work and work on the voice and pronunciation. It's good that he reads fairy tales and songs and sings in a well-modulated voice. The robot is able to take over some of the reminders like brush your teeth or wash your hands. It's enough to tell him. Amelia, remind the child to brush his teeth in 10 minutes. In addition, Amelia can teach the child the basics of some disciplines, including mathematics, Russian, geography, and biology. Well, at the end of the day, the robot can ask the child if he wants to go to bed. The answer can be guessed, but here as luck would have it, the robot is able to pronounce everything you write in the dialog box and even express one of the emotions. Emotions cannot be added yet. We use those that are by default. The robot's functions are fully activated after connecting it to Wi-Fi, preferably with internet access. The device can also be useful for parents. For example, to work as a baby monitor. To do this, Amelia is equipped with a camera. In order to manage it, you need a mobile application that is available for both Adnoid OS and IOZU. The picture quality leaves much to be desired. If the Nokia 3000 310 had a camera, it would shoot the same, or even better. The advantage of the robot is that it is self-learning, so that when communicating with a child, it becomes smarter, adapting to the preferences of its companion. However, self-study works here mainly only in relation to working with speech. As for the questions that the robot needs to answer, they are analyzed by the company's employees, adding new answers. The database is promised to be constantly updated. The more communication with the kids, the more often the database will be updated. Thanks for attention. Put likes, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell.